My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and Associated and Licensed Characters are the property and creative license of Hasbro Studios, DHX Media Vancouver, Lauren Faust, and Discovery Family, Discovery Kids, and Tiny Pop. Please support the official release. Moonshot of Mystery is the creative property of Darren Self, better known as Moonshot of Mystery, the Changeling. If you would like to use his original character for fan art or other creative projects, please credit them with a link to their DeviantArt account into this channel. Please enjoy your video. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Moonshadow Mystery Channel. I, as always, am your host, Moonshadow Mystery the Changeling. And today I am doing another viewer special. Once again, Cam Barrage, thank you for another amazing suggestion. Uh, Cam Barrage is a regular viewer of this channel from... Yeah, from Jolly Old London, yeah, home of Gorillas. Yeah, one of my favorite bands of all time. And he's quite an avid fan of My Little Pony. You a brony from across the pond, I'm always happy to oblige you, mate. And, well, he last time he suggested my thoughts on the Equestria Girls franchise as well as my expectations. Well, this time, Cam, thank you, or Cameron, rather, thank you very much for suggesting me to do my thoughts and expectations for the 2017 My Little Pony movie. Uh, for those not aware, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is, in fact, getting a full-length cinematic release feature film and it is scheduled or was announced rather to be released in theaters October 6th of 2017 now it was originally scheduled for sometime in November of 2017 but they actually it was a matter of fact November 3rd but they pushed the date forward so things are going pretty smoothly, apparently. Now, as always, our classic voice actors and actresses will be reprising their normal roles. Tara Strong is Princess Twilight. Ashley Ball is Applejack and Rainbow Dash. Andrea Littman is Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, with Shan and Chan Kent doing Pinkie Pie's singing voice. Tabitha St. Germain reprising her role as Rarity, with Kazumi Evans performing the singing voice for Rarity. And Kathy... Weasla as Spike. But we're also going to be getting some pretty good celebrity appearing voice actors as well. Starting with Sia Furler from Australia playing the car the Pegasus pop star Songbird Serenade. Uh, I don't know what role she's going to be playing just yet. But it's a good indicator. We're probably going to be having some decent music. Now, the MLP staff has assured us this is not going to have any impact whatsoever with the Equestria Girls. Now, that's actually, well, more specifically, it's not an Equestria Girls movie, and that's not like we'd have any crossovers. Uh, however, since this is for 2017, and we're more than likely going to get another Equestria Girls movie, given how the Legend of Everfree left off, it is possible we're going to have some sort of you know, implications. And now, additional people who are going to be joining the cast include... I feel, pardon me for looking off screen. I'm having to look off screen in order to go to my other screen um, to see the names. We have Tay Diggs, an American actor and vocalist from New Jersey. Now, for those who aren't aware... He actually has had some voiceover work already. Uh, he's probably most well known. Sorry, I'm having my nose has been itching me all day. Um, but what he's probably most well known for doing, as far as his vocal work, is as the character Black Panther from the animated series Marvel's Superhero Squad. Now, I know many fans like me of the Marvel series aren't keenly too keen on the superhero squad because it's such a I don't really know how to say it I mean it, it tr it's kind of like how Transformers Rescue Bots is only not as well written you know it's kind of out there it's like it's own little pocket universe um but again Tay 
has also appeared in NCIS as USMC Gunnery Sergeant Aaron Davis. Fans of NCIS, I'm sure you probably recognize him. But he's, in a, he's appeared in quite a few television franchises. Uh, he even, for the younger audiences out there, he actually was on Sesame Street back in 2010 as himself during the episode Snuffle Sneeze. Now, I don't watch Sesame Street anymore. I mean, not since I've grown up. But I like to put these little calls out there for the younger audience members and give them something they can reference. But he's appeared in all kinds of things, including Top Model, Punked, Law and Order. Oh, and he was actually in the 1997 animated series of 101 Dalmatians as the character Dre. The episode he appeared in was titled He Followed Me Home. So he's actually had some voiceover work for quite a while back. And he even played the character Tommy in the Hanna-Barbera Warner Brothers animated movie Scooby-Doo Music of the Vampire in 2012. So we're not shy of anything when it comes to this guy. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what his character is going to end up being. Uh, they've not specified what his role is what or anything, so I like that they're keeping it a mystery. Thankfully, they've not released much yet, so it's a good way for me to keep kind of out of the loop, so no spoilers. Um, another amazing talent we're getting to the cast is Kristen Chenoweth, who is from Oklahoma. Miss Chenoweth as had some Broadway performances, including 97's Steel Pier, uh, 2003's Broadway rendition of Wicked, and most recently in 2015 on the 20th century. Now for fans of Applejack and the Apple family in general, even though this has no relation whatsoever to them, she also appeared in 2006's Broadway performance of The Apple Tree. I just had to make that reference. I just couldn't help myself. But she's also appeared in other theatrical productions. Uh, she was in not. She was in Phantom, um, The Fantastics, Love, Loss, and What I Wore. And as far as her film goes, she is most well known for Disney's Tinkerbell movie franchise, as playing the voice of Rosetta. So you may recognize her voice. She was also in the 2005 Bewitched movie reboot, and she played Tia Hall in the movie Deck the Halls in 2006. She also played the character Kilowatt in the movie Space Chimps, and I apologize, I keep looking off screen, I know I don't normally do that, but unfortunately I have it on my secondary monitor so that I'm not having to click off of my camera view, that's about the only way I know that I'm in focus. Um, but yeah, in one of her more recent works, for those who want examples of her voiceover talent, she was in 2015's The Peanuts Movie as the character Fifi. So it's really hard to say what she's going to be playing now. According to what's been released, her character has not yet been identified. So again, we have another mystery, but another fantastic voice talent. Now up next, as far as the new characters go, being added to the staff, we have Emily Blunt from London, England. Yeah, how fitting, you know, that we got something from London, England when this whole, you know, video thing was recommended by one of my mates over in the UK. It's kind of a, kind of a bit ironic, wouldn't you agree? And for those who are trying to place, you know, who I'm trying to imitate here, uh, it's pot. Stuart Pot, yeah, most well known as being, uh, you know, 2D, you know, from the Damon Albarn animated frontman Gorillas. Yeah, you know, if you don't know the Gorillas, oh well, yeah, you, know, you need to get yourself cultured. Anyways, Miss Blunt has had quite a decent career in television and film since 2003, even. But she originated on the stage. 2000's Bliss, 
01 to 02's royal family, Vincent and Brixton, and 2002's Romeo and Juliet as the role of Juliet. In television, she has, and I'm sure a lot of her stuff probably doesn't make a lot of sense to us in the States, but she actually was a host on Saturday Night Live this year, as a matter of fact. She's appeared on Lip Sync Battle, and she played a guest starring role in and I know I try to keep my stuff from re myself from referencing a lot of adult humor, a lot of adult shows. I'm making one, a little exception here because this is an example of her voiceover talent. Now, children in the audience, please do not watch any the only the show I'm about to make mention of without parental supervision. It ha is not appropriate for anyone under the age of 13, and I highly recommend you do not watch it without consent. But she appeared in, as the character Juliet Hobbs in the episode Lisa the Drama Queen of the Teen Fox series The Simpsons in 2009. Now, for those who are fans of more adult television, she appeared in Empire as the character Kamane for six consecutive for six episodes actually. Pretty impressive. Now, for those who want to know what her she's done as far as film, and I'm not going to list it all. She was in 07's Charlie Wilson's War, um, The Devil Wears Prada in 06. She actually was in 2011's reboot of the Muppet franchise as Miss Piggy's receptionist. And her most recent works, which you can aired this year in, no, in 2016, she was the character Freya in the movie The Huntsman Winter's War, as well as the character Rachel Watson in The Girl on the Train. And again, I apologize for keeping on looking off to the side, but, you know, I'm not a chameleon. I can't live with one eye. I've tried. It hurts. Now, next up, we have the talented Michael Pena. Mr. Pena is an actor and musician from Illinois, right here in the good old U.S. I believe he got to start sometime in the 90s between Pacific Blue on television and the film My Fellow Americans. Now, as far as his television career goes, he's been in quite a few things. Touched by an Angel, Seventh Heaven, Roswell, and again, I don't like it, making a lot of references to adult shows, but he was in the adult animated comedy American Dad for two episodes as the character Marguerite. And he's also been in NYPD Blue and CSI in CSI, he was Juanito Concha, and in NYPD Do, he played Ferd. Wait, has he played two different characters? Ferd and Wilmer Lopez? Hmm. He was also in the 2003 Twilight Zone as Noah. Going back to film, uh, he's actually going to be playing, starring in two films set to come out next year. The My Little Pony movie, as well as the Lego Ninjaga movie. Now, this is interesting because he's actually going to be taking the place of whoever has been playing this character in the animated series. Um, he'll be playing the voice of Kai. Now, I'm not entirely sure why he's playing the voice of Kai instead of whoever's been normally playing him, but I'm looking forward to seeing that. Now, he was also most recently, well, I mean, not most recently, but as for fans of the Marvel franchise, he was in the movie Ant Man as the character Lewis. And for fans of animated movies that are, in fact, child-appropriate, he was actually a voice talent in the movie Turbo. He played Tito Lopez of Do from Dos Bros Tacos. Now, he's also been in at least one video game. More specifically, Lego Marvel's Avengers as his character, Lewis. So, yeah, he got a reprisal. Now, so far, Michael has not had a character, his character specified yet, which, again, I'm glad. You know, the more mysteries, the better. I am looking forward to seeing how his 
local works over. Now, this one I am extremely looking forward to talking about. Miss Uzo Aduba from Massachusetts. Miss Aduba's character has not been specified yet, but there's a reason I am so excited. She has had work on stage, film, and television. As far as television goes, well, I'm going to say television for last because I am so excited to talk about it. But she was in the movie Alvin and the Chipmunks The Road Chip as a TSA officer. She was in this year's Tallulah and American Pastoral. But as far as television, for fans of fashion, she was on Project Runway All-Stars. She was also in Blue Bloods, Orange was the new buy. Again, that is an adult show on Netflix. Please, children, if you do not watch without adult consent, and probably shouldn't watch, period. Okay, some of this stuff is not child-friendly. You know, some of the stuff that I'm referencing is more for my adult audience members. Please do not watch some of these things without adult supervision. I do not want to be held responsible for making references without giving that warning. Now, she was on... Actually, it was played the character Galinda the Good Witch in The Wiz Live last year on television. And she's also been on Saturday Night Live as Daughter Dudley. But again, here's what I've been wanting to talk about this whole time. Oh, I'm so excited. She is, in fact, the voice of Bismuth from Steven Universe. I'm Bismuth. Ah, yeah. I am so excited to see what she plays in this movie. Bismuth was bombastic. She was loud. She was funny she was awesome and she was a very emotionally fragmented character i cannot wait to see what kind of talent she brings to my little pony moving on before i have a conniption next up we have leave schreiber now schreiber mr schreiber will be playing an unspecified monster in the movie who is going to be in opposition to my to the main six uh, we don't know if he's going to be a permanent villain or if he's going to be come an ally or not but Mr. Schreiber has an amazingly long film resume spanning from 94 to present for, again, fans for the Marvel franchise, he was in X-Men Origins Wolverine as Victor Creed, a.k.a. Sabretooth. I know a lot of us don't like talking about X-Men Origins. It was not the strongest of the X-Men movies of late. Believe it or not, there actually are ones way worse. I kind of see it as a B-movie kind of thing, like a guilty pleasure. But he's been on a lot of stuff. Unf uh... Mixed Nuts, Scr the Scream franchise, which is in... He was in the first three as the character Cotton Weary. Now, I'm not a big fan of Scream, personally. That's just me. He was in The Omen as Robert Thorne. Repo Man as Frank. I'm trying not to get too heavy, because he's got a long thing. Now, most recently this year... 2016, he's been in The Fifth Wave as well as The Bleeder. In The Fifth Wave, he plays Colonel Bosch, and in The Bleeder, he plays Chuck Wepner. Now, next year, he'll also be playing in Goon, Last of the Enforcers, as Ross the Boss Rhea. Now, as far as television goes, he's not had a whole lot of things. And again, adult consent for this one, please. He was in Robot Chicken as the voices of, the Ir of Iron Man and King Triton. Now he's been again. He hasn't been in very many television series. He played himself in Saturday Night Live. Um, he's the voice of Copernicus and BoJack Horseman. You know, there's a few things. He's been in CSI as Michael Kepler. CSI is a good show. You know, if you get your start on CSI, you're going places. You know, that's my opinion. He's won all kinds of awards: Golden Globes, Screen Actors Guild, Satellite. And I can I know I didn't mention these for a lot of these people, and I should have, but. You know, this is a star-studded cast. And of course, Sia Fuller, who I've already mentioned, the Australian singer, who'll be playing our 
pot pony. She had, didn't really have any real filmography aside from Annie in, oh, in 2014, Transparent in 2015, and then next year, in addition to My Little Pony the movie, she'll be in the movie Charming. Now, I don't know if she's going to be there as a singer or if she's going to have a more serious acting role. And, and the movie to be announced she's going to be in is Sister. Now, she has a few albums that's been out since 97. Um, this year, her album This Is Acting came out. It's either an album or a Oh no, I think it's an album. It's discography. Anyway, we got some pretty good voice talents to go with. I haven't even gotten into anything else yet. I mean, I've been, you know, going on and on about the voice talents. You know, from what I've heard and from what we've seen in the series, we're getting, yeah, allegedly, possibly getting more reprisals of some Generation 1 characters. Well, not just Gen 1. I mean, the Breezies, I think, were Gen 3. Some people like them, some people don't. But we have, we've had the Breezies, we've had the return of the Schmooze, t rex as well as Scorpan. I mean, who's to say who else is coming? But I've heard alleged rumors. I'm, I'm hesitant with rumors, but that we're going to be seeing the return of Sea Ponies. And we're actually going to be getting a little bit of a continuity call that, back to Twilight Spell. That lets her transform her and her friends into other species. But most importantly, world building. I don't know where all we're going to be seeing, but they're allegedly going to be leaving Equestria altogether in order to save Equestria. We may be seeing, you know, our first introductory to the Zebra Empire and to some of the other places we've heard about but not gotten to see. We may get to see Yak Yakistan in person outside of the gates. Do not quote me on that. This is just a theory. A theory I hope comes to pass, but I cannot guarantee Hey, you know, we've, this is going to be an epic thing, because they're going all out. They're doing everything they can to try and make this stand out so that fans of the series can get everything they want. Now, the one thing I'm not sure about is whether or not this is going to be the end of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, or just the beginning of something even greater. Now, as I've already talked about and has already been confirmed, 2017 will be seeing Season 7. So chances are the next Equestria Girls movie, as well as this movie, are going to tie into whatever events happen in Season 7. I have no earthly clue if we're going to be seeing Season 8 or not. And we're closing in on the 200 episode mark, or at least we will be by the time Season 7 is over. We may actually get a second viewer special. I have no idea. But I am totally pumped. Will I be seeing it in theaters? I have no idea. And it's all going to depend on whether or not I've got the Mooney, the bits to do so. Being unemployed makes that very difficult. You know, I've got some stuff, you know, that I'm trying to get rid of. Maybe I can get a yard sale done so I can have the money set aside to do so. No idea. I'll more than likely be watching alone. And no, I will not be wearing the helmet. I might want to wear the helmet, but I won't. Until, unless, of course, I become famous by then. Here's hoping! But, not likely. But yeah, that's my first thoughts. As far as my expectations, I'm trying not to get them too high. I got them a little too high for the Season 6 finale in the hopes that I'd see Ember, and that kind of got dashed. But, who knows? I mean, it'd be nice if we actually got some callbacks to some other Generation 1 villains. I mean, mine... Looking back at Gen 1 from the 80s and the early 90s, yes, it was a little ridiculous and a little too girl pandering, but they have really shown their stuff by reimagining some of these Gen 1 characters. I mean, the schmooze, as ridiculous as it was, was actually enjoyable. t rex was even more fierce and intimidating than his G1 counterpart. The Breezies, significantly more adorable and more enjoyable. You know, I have my hopes high that this is going to be a phenomenal entry. And if, this, and if this does end up being the last thing we see of Friendship is Magic, then I expect we're going out with a bang. Do I think we are? I don't know. We will more than likely have the IDW comics of Friendship is Magic for years. I don't see that ending anytime soon. 
but it's all going to come down to whether or not see what Season 7 has in store, and to what the movie has in store for us. Honestly, fingers crossed, because I am so looking forward to this. And yes, if I go, I am wearing my t-shirt. I don't care what people say, I'm wearing the tags, I'm wearing the t-shirt, and if I'm famous enough, I may even wear the helmet. Might be getting hard to watch, though, because I'm sure you've seen, I have to adjust my glasses pretty frequently with this thing. But yes, I am so excited. But what do you think? And if you have any spoilers for the movie, please, that you've seen in Comic-Con, BronyCon, whatever, um, please try and keep it out of the comment section. I'm trying to keep my exposure to spoilers to a bare minimum, because I want to have my mind blown. But before I call this video to a close, I want to take a quick moment to remind everyone, and this will be available in the description below, of ways you can contact me to make suggestions, submit fan art, or just get in touch for general purposes. You can contact me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Darren dot self dot 12. Message me on Skype at Moonshadow Mystery parentheses Darren Self. Check me out on DeviantArt at greatdragonsayer.deviantart.com. Check me out on Twitter at Moonshadow underscore Mist. Or hook me up, check me out with Gmail, selfdarren1 at gmail.com. And again, for those like me who are visitors to the Second Life virtual reality world, look me up uh, as Dark Ryu Burner. That's capital D, ARC, capital R, Y, U, then a space, and Burner. Probably easier to look me up by typing in Moonshot Mystery. I don't know. But that's what my display name is. I'll be, you'll more likely find me hanging around Ponytown. Don't take me down to Ponytown. But yeah, um, if you do get in touch with me via Skype, Gmail, etc., I do have some audio recordings. Basically rehearsal sessions, uh, ideas for potential future segments that I've not done, not recorded, and maybe even just beta to something I've already done. That will be available as kind of like a special gift if you get in touch with me in those ways. Um, I was saving it for Patreon, but Patreon is still... I'm not sure how to get that working right. I guess until I get working again, get a bank thing figured out, I don't know. But yeah, those are my thoughts and expectations for 2017's My Little Pony the Movie. But what do you think? What do you hope to see? You know, leave it in the comment sections down below. If you liked this video, click like. If you didn't, click dislike. If you liked this video and want to see more, please click the subscribe button. Or, if you're not sure yet, go ahead and click my name above the description and go to my channel where you can see some of my other work. So most recently, I've done stuff for Dragon Ball Super, Steven Universe, Equestria Girls, and right before this video, my first thoughts on Pokemon Sun and Moon. There's all kinds of things waiting for you, including Moonshadow Sings slash Impersonates, including one why tend to be Discord. <laughs> A little glass of water, please. But there's also one where I play tribute to the late, great Robin Williams. And again, if you have suggestions for future content, you can either leave them in the section below, or use one of the methods I've shown to get in touch with me and make those suggestions. If you want to make, perhaps try and collab with me, I'm more than happy to see what we can do about that. Bear in mind, I'm still trying to get my vector sorted out, I'm still trying to get my format figured out. But get in touch with me. I'm... I'm available to communicate, and I'll try and get back with you ASAP. And for those who are friends of I Love Kim Possible, aka KP, um, she's currently at Ponyville Cider Fest, and she's still not doing too good. I don't know if anyone has paid, knows who I'm talking about, but she's been kind of feeling a little under the weather, and she's still recovering. If you know her, if you're a fan of her, send her some well wishes. She needs a little pick me up. And honestly, I want her to get better soon. KP, if for any reason you decide to watch this, you know, get well soon. I really hate seeing great creators like you feeling down in the dumps. 
You know, we want to see you get back on your hooks. Anyways, this is my... This is Moon Shadow Mystery of the Changeling saying, don't go changing for anyone but yourselves. And as always, everyone, take care, have a great rest of the day, and a great rest of the week. And again, if you have or any desire to do fan art of my original character, Moon Shadow Mystery of the Changeling, which you can always see in my opening title card, or on my DeviantArt account, please feel free to submit that art to me through my Gmail, through Skype, whatever. I'll try and feature it on this channel if possible, and I'll be more than happy to put it with, you know, links to the original work on my DeviantArt account as fan art. Hopefully one day I'll get this all sorted out so I can feature it properly on this channel. Anyways, thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and have a safe rest of your day.